Welcome to February's virtual painting class here at Westside. I'm Victoria and today we will be painting the Eiffel Tower on a cloudy day. So for today you're going to get a traceable of the Eiffel Tower, carbon paper, your canvas, and paint uh, in your painting kit, you get white, black, and red. This month, our painting only uses three colors. Um, I would suggest when you're at home and you're selling, setting up your palette that you split up your white and have some white next to your black and then some white next to your red. Okay, so what do you not get in your kit? Uh, you're going to need paper towel, water, and your brushes. So, this month we are using a large size bright. Um, basically, this is going to be a large flat brush. You're going to need this to paint your background. You are going to be using an 8 flat. Yes, it is a flat, not a filbert. I know. For this month, I will not be using my beloved filbert. And a size eight round. Um, basically, the difference between a round brush and a lining brush is that the round brush is just a little bit fuller but it is also a small uh, tapered brush that you use to do fine detail work because it has the bristle size is a little bit bigger than a liner. Um, it doesn't take you as long to do some of your in-close work and also you'll get a thicker line. All right. Um, if you don't have a round brush in your kit. If you just have like a liner brush, that's fine. You just basically need a small detail brush that you can use. All right, so let's start painting. The first thing you're going to do is actually we're going to make a line because part of your background is going to be the sky and then part of it is going to be kind of like a street. But it's going to both be gray. It's just going, the paint is going to be going in opposite directions. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is take your traceable and you're going to place it where you have about four fingers worth. you have about four fingers up from the bottom of your canvas and where your Eiffel, the bottom of your Eiffel Tower, you're going to draw a line. So position your Eiffel Tower. The bottom here is going to be your line that separates the sky from the street. And when you have it positioned where you want it, just draw a line across your canvas. All right, so if you notice, That puts the bottom of your Eiffel Tower around here and you have probably about a one inch from the little spire on top of it. All right, so we're gonna set the traceable aside for the moment and we are going to get out our bright, our big brush. Um, and we're going to load it with black and white to get our gray background. Um, those of you who've done the painting classes with me before are gonna be familiar with this where you 
dip your black in one corner and then you're dip your white in the other. All right, so we've done our sky and now we're going to do our foreground, our street view. And we're gonna do it in the gray again. So if you notice our background, we have the paint going in two directions. So we have your sky is going to be going vertically and then your street is gonna be going horizontal. All right, so after you've painted your background, you're going to need to let it dry. Um, you can either uh, set it aside and let it air dry or break out the hair dryer. Uh, hair dryer, it'll be done in a couple minutes, air dry, you let it dry for about 15, 20 minutes. All right. Once your canvas is dry, you're going to need your carbon paper and your traceable. All right, put, lay the carbon paper down. And you want to line your Eiffel Tower up where the bottom of the Eiffel Tower is right on the horizon line. Make sure that your Eiffel Tower is fully on the canvas and simply trace. So once you have your Eiffel Tower traced, just lift it up and you're going to see an imprint. You are going to need your um, brown brush. Right. And we're going to use the black. And we're going to go over those pencil marks with the black paint. Now I like to move my canvas around while I'm painting. Try to keep the pressure of your brush even as you go over the lines. If not, that's okay. We're going for an impressionist look, which Basically, an impressionist were a circle of artists who were painting in the later part of the 19th century, early 20th century in France. And one of the hallmarks of their paintings was that the details when close up were kind of blurry 
but when you backed up and looked at it from far away, you saw more. It became clearer. Um, probably the most famous example of this was Monet. And he did a lot of landscapes. You might have seen a picture of his water lilies. That's one of his more famous works. And all of these guys, they were working out of France. So. Yeah, Monet did, he did landscapes. Once again, you want to keep enough paint on your brush that it just flows when you're painting. Keep an even pressure. Also, try to keep your lines straight. So for our little ball on top of the Eiffel Tower, we are actually going to paint it in. So it's going to be solid black. And then just paint our antenna. Okay, I'm going to go in and thicken my line for that bottom arch. and for the arch in the center. Just the middle, just the top. Okay, we're gonna make it super, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I'm going back over my top top line right here because I did not get as straight as I wanted. Okay. So we've done the outline for our Eiffel Tower and we are through with our round for the moment. Uh, set her aside. And we're going to get out that eight flat. All right. So we're going to load it up with white, get a little black. And then we're going to fill in the Eiffel Tower with these dots. And our dots are just going to be made um, by loading up the brush with some white, a little bit of black, and then starting and just dabbing along. And we wanna keep it more white than black. When we load our paintbrush, we want like a very
don't want our I guess our dots are filling to be the same color as our background. And you want to make dots. that have some texture to them. Kind of like do it. You're gonna do this in a pouncing motion. Like pouncing or sponge paint. Think of it like that. Now we're going to leave this section right here and right here alone for right now. Not too much paint on our brush. Right. And also don't we don't want this too blended. Basically, the idea is to give this some texture and mimic the scaffold work of the Eiffel Tower. Just picked up a little too much paint there. You don't want it to be too gray, as we want it to be distinguished from our background. Okay. All right. So we're going to put our eight aside for a moment. Always remember when you get through with your paintbrush. Rinse it out and blot it. And we're going to come back to our round brush and we are going to make little slash lines in this section and this section. All right, and you want them fairly close together. And you're just going to use the tip of your brush. Keep your lines close together. Try to keep even pressure. And going to do this section now.
I'm keeping my lines with an even space. Now I'm going to go back and go back over some of my outline in case I lost that when I was pouncing. I know, and you might be wondering, well, if I'm going to have to go back in and go over back some of my lines, what was the point of outlining before I filled in my tower? Uh, the main reason is that black is very bold. It's easy to see on the background. So outlining it first gives you a visual distinction to go in with. It's easier to see than those pencil lines. All right. Oh. Okay. Um, Je where is Jennifer? Yeah. Okay, and we're just going to finish, continue. We go over some, continue filling back in some of the belt lines. looking at my fill in places and I'm deciding, okay, it's a nice kind of like gray. There's some contrast, but I want to add a little bit of black. So we're just going to kind of go in. Okay. We're going to get our eight again and kind of go in with a little bit of black. We're adding for some texture. like okay I'm happy with how my Eiffel tower looks so once we reach that point
right, so I'm happy with my Eiffel Tower. I'm not gonna play with it anymore. I'm gonna clean my brushes because you, that is something that you need to kind of think about is what point am I happy with it or am I just gonna keep kind of like messing with it and it's like becomes a hot mess. And we're kind of to the, okay, we're a good stopping point. I like it. Let's stop fiddling with it before it. Okay. So, all right, I have my brushes clean. All right. All right, so. We are gonna get our eight again, and we're gonna get loaded with some black, and we're going to wet our brush because we are going to make a shadow of our Eiffel Tower. Basically, you're going to do it in a V. Your shadow is going to come out in a V. All right. And if you used a little too much water, you can always blot some of it. Okay. So when you add water to your paint, it thins it out. And that's kind of what you want for something like this because it's basically, it's a reflection in a puddle. You want it to have like this little bit of a translucent quality. All right. So we have our shadow in our puddle and we need to clean our brush again. And you need to make sure your brush is good and clean because we're gonna move on to the red. Uh, we're through with the black for the moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, you might have noticed I actually switched cups of water. You just want to keep rinsing it out until you're until it blots clean. brush with some red and we're going to be making our leaves for our trees because right here we're going to put in a tree line with red and whites and then up here we're going to have um, some leaves okay so to do this kind of decide how high your tree line's gonna come. It should come up to about that first section with the hash lines. And you're just gonna start making like strokes of red. Because basically, 
And so we're going to go and fill this in with some white too. Okay, and then we're going to get some white. That's basically to fill it in. That's basically we're going to we want to look at this to look like a bush for right now. And then right on our horizon line, we're going to have some, some red. And we're going to come in with a little bit of white over red. So it looks like the trees in the distance behind the Eiffel Tower. And then we're going to do our left side just like this. Go back over some white. And see, the impressionistic quality of this comes in because when you're looking at it up close, there's not a whole lot of definition, but when you get through with your painting and look at it from a distance, you'll see the Eiffel Tower, you'll see the trees, you'll see the shadow. All right, so we're going to come up. All right, so you're gonna come up a little bit, say about halfway up to like where the spire is. And we're gonna make some more leaves. Think about when you're doing this, think about when you drew trees as a kid and it was just kind of like a big, bushy, green shape. That's kind of what we're going for here, but with white and red. <laughs> There, it's full and bushy. Let that dry for a moment. Clean your brush because we are going to, all right. So we're gonna add another shadow. We're gonna get some of the red. And we're gonna dip our brush. And we're going to come, it's like it's reflected in the puddle. And we're gonna get a little bit more red and get some water on our brush and do this side. And when you're doing this, I'm just doing kind of like a zigzag. Yeah, your paint should almost have like a watercolor kind of consistency when you're doing this. Oh. Okay. All right. So we are finished with our 
eight for right now. We're going back to our round brush, which is that small brush that we've been using for detail work. Okay. And we're going back to the black. All right. Well, actually, before that, we're going to add. All right. So when putting in your trees, so the ones close to the edge of the canvas are going to be thicker and because it's going to be closer to you, it's perspective. The further away something is, the smaller it looks. So as you draw in your tree limbs and trunks, Think of it as, okay, I'm standing here and I'm looking this way. So these are going to look bigger than the ones here. And you're just gonna freehand it. Do a line or two for a trunk. It doesn't matter if it's straight. Tree limbs are never straight. I kind of want one to fork. Uh, I think I might put one here. Ooh, let's go up. And one not. Uh -huh. All right, and same way with this side, we're looking, the objects here will be closer than here. So, you want to start. Here for the top of our tray, we're just going to say take in the center and draw in a branch. And we're just going to have one last thing to do and we're going to use our round again get it clean because we're going to add some white okay so we have the Eiffel Tower reflected in like this puddle we have the trees reflected in a puddle so what are they reflecting from so we're going to add some white on the horizon line to mimic lights around the Eiffel Tower. Right. And we're just going to come in and use that pouncing motion again on a horizon line using a round brush. Mm 
and you want to use your tip so you're getting a dot effect and not a solid line. and you want a pretty thick line so make sure your paintbrush has a good amount of paint So that was the last thing to do on our painting. So we have our Eiffel Tower impressionistic painting on a cloudy day. All right, thanks for joining me today. Uh, I hope to see you in March where we will be painting Digging for Carrots. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.